It is Wednesday, July 28, 2021. Currently, nine minutes past the nine o'clock hour. Remember back when we promised to start the show on time and we did it for about two weeks and then we decided this isn't us. This show isn't about starting on time. We truly embraced and opened our arms to what it means to be a Montreal comedy institution. Is it presumptuous of me to call this show a Montreal comedy institution? I don't think it is. I don't I don't see any other shows that started over a year ago throughout a C-19 pandemic maintaining itself 16 to 17 months later. Is this a comedy institution? I think so. But much like most comedy institutions across the 514, as cool kids like to call it, we don't start on time. You have become acclimated to this show starting late, so we embrace the fact that this show starts late. And why shouldn't it? People show up, they go get a snack, they pop some popcorn, they crack open a Reese piece, they sit down on their chair or their couch or their toilet, wherever you're sitting, watching your show from, we greet you 10 minutes past the advertised start time. I am James, you are you. We are here for another breathtaking, exciting, and exhilarating edition of what? At Home with James, live on Twitch. This past Monday, we were back to where we once belonged. It had been weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks since we hit the Twitch airwaves on a Monday. And I have to say, I didn't feel too good about it. I was really phoning these performances in over two weeks. We're back to Monday. I feel like a king back on his, what do you call that, a uh, chair. I feel like a king back on his chair. But it wasn't a normal week on this show, was it? No, it wasn't. We were doing things a little differently. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, well, we're about to get things started in a great big way because this ain't, this ain't your daddy's at home with James tonight. This ain't your mommy's at home with James. This ain't your pervert uncle Terry's at home with James. Or maybe it is because I would like to welcome you so graciously with open arms to night two of the James for Laughs Festival because it's nasty night. Hit the music. Welcome one and welcome all. What began on Monday, we are back live and in living color right here on Wednesday. Now, when the word nasty comes to mind, when it festers in your brain, you know as well as I do that Wednesday is by far the nastiest night of the week. A lot of people think things get a little dirty a little frisky on a Thursday, maybe a Friday, most certainly on a Saturday, never on a Sunday. But what people don't know is that Wednesday is where all the weirdos, the wackos, and the winos go to get wild. And that's exactly what we are going to do tonight on night two of the James for Laughs Festival. Things kicked off in a big way on Monday. Nikki Fournier was here, but so was Dave Kaufman. And I have to tell you, his set was absolutely fantastic. He blew people away so much that we had industry in the crowd. We didn't tell them that it was industry night on, on Monday. By popular demand, Dave Kaufman is back tonight. On Monday, he did his PG material. And I have it on good authority that tonight, Dave's material is going to leave every single person watching tonight feeling nothing but moist. Dave Kaufman later oh, on nice. tonight also joining us as part of, I guess what you could call James FL Northwest, Raquel Belmonte coming to us from Vancouver, British Columbia, where it's only 6.14 p.m. Let me tell you something. Also one of the nastiest times at night. Things get real goopy in the afternoon in British Columbia, Raquel, known for her oh, foul mouth and 
how should we put this? Adult themed segments will be here as well. We're going to kick things off in style with one of the nastiest men that you will ever cross paths with. He's got a PhD in horniness. Please welcome to the stage, no matter where you are situated, for the one and only Dr. Jack Nasty, live at James FL. <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy, it's so good to be here. Thank you. Give it up for James McGee, everybody. Oh, yeah, you know who it is. You know who's here. <laughs> it's Dr. Jack Nasty making a, a wonderful appearance. And I'm not talking about uh, no medical treatments tonight. No, because tonight Jack Nasty is doing some of his dirty at late stand up live here in front of Super Sex Strip Tease. Here on St. Catherine Street, the nastiest place in the city. And folks, <laughs> folks, let me tell you one thing. A little warning off the top. Huh? Someone tell the PC police that we're going to lock them up in the prison because the prisoners are now in control of the insane asylum, all right? Because we, tonight, are getting real nasty. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, that's right, folks. Folks. So I uh, just introduce yourself. You don't, if you're not familiar with me, I'm Dr. Jack Nasty. I do research at Harvard, the Harvard of hard ons, that is. I'm the physician of phallic pleasure. But tonight, folks, tonight we're not talking about uh, medical science. In fact, as a scientist myself, I've uh, found God recently. Yeah, that's right. I found God. Uh, oh, drop my phone here. I found God in the missionary position, folks, in the missionary position. Okay. All right, where's my laugh track? It's hard to tech a show and be in, in it as well. No, that's the wrong one. Here it is. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you. You're too kind. You're too kind. Oh, okay. I, I can tell there's some real freaks out in the audience tonight. I see a lot of freaks out here. Hey, give it up for your host, James, one more time. Huh? James McGee, huh, folks? What a, what a guy. What a swell guy. So uh, nasty. Yeah, he is nasty. That's right. He's so, so nasty. You know, uh, James, I haven't seen that much, uh, uh, that much muff on a face since I was briefly a gynecologist for a coven of werewolves. We have fun. We have fun. We're, we're just ripping you, James. Give it up for James one more time. He's great. He's great. Folks, you know, I, I, I know I said I wasn't going to talk too much about the medical profession, but some wacky characters, some wacky characters that come into my office all the time. You know, I was once, uh, I once had a patient in my office and I said, I have some bad news. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to make this to you. I have some bad news, but you're going to have to stop masturbating. And he said, I don't understand, talk. You know, the patient, he's like, I don't understand. Why? And I said, because I'm trying to examine you. Oh, we have fun here. We have fun, huh? Uh, give it up for your host, James, one more time. He's such a great host. Hey, you know, uh, so I was I was actually at a doctor's office myself. You know, I actually went to go see a doctor, but it was at a at a sperm bank. I was making a little bit of a deposit, okay? And on my way out, get this, get this, the receptionist, she looks at me and she says, thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, we have fun, folks. We have fun. We have fun. That's all good stuff, you know. Um, um, I actually, uh, you know, I, I would, I, I always, I was there sitting there, you know, uh, making my deposit. I said, why does it, why does it take a hundred million sperm to fertilize one egg? It's true, folks. Hundred million sperm to fertilize one egg, folks. Why does it take so many sperm to fertilize one egg? And I realized it's because they don't stop to ask for directions, folks. They don't stop to ask for directions. These sperm, they they got places to be. Okay, you like that one a little bit less. So I understand. I just that. Oh, no, you came around to that one. You came around to that one. Oh, you folks are great. Give it up one more time for your host. Your host. Hey, I see a lot of freaks out here. You know what? What are we? What are we excited about, folks? What, what do you guys want me to talk about? Anyone out here want me to talk about something? Do I see someone in the chat wants to talk about something? Huh? Anyone? No one in the chat? Okay, we're moving on from the crowd work portion of the show. Okay, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, uh, you know, 
so you know, I, I made a deposit, right? But uh, sometimes, sometimes I need uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the company of a beautiful woman, right? So I go down. I uh, this is true. I uh, oh, for a white guy, you love Caribbean time. Naive adventures. The, the, the crowd works a little too late on this platform. Hey, hey listen, listen. Uh, you think I like Caribbean time? Uh, ask my wife who left me on a cruise ship. <laughs> oh, we have fun. We have fun. We have fun. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, 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 so I went to go see a woman of the night. Okay. I admit it. I admit it. Okay. I admit it. All right. I'm not perfect. All right. Yeah, stay, stay. Yeah, it's real nasty, okay. But I went to this brothel, oh, right? Uh, oh, that's my that's my self tape that's playing that on the same project. So, anyways, I go to this I go to this this house of of of, of, of uh, you know this brothel, and I see uh, it's out of business. My favorite brothel, folks, it's out of business, and there's just a sign on the on the door, and it says, "Beat it, we're closed." <laughs> oh, we have fun here, folks. We have fun. It's nasty night, folks. It's getting nasty. It's getting nasty. You know, folks, I've been uh, it's been real hard times lately. I don't know about you. It's been real hard for me, but I've been on this Serb. Huh, folks, anyone on this Serb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I often tell people, I say, what's the difference between my penis and my Serb check? Huh? Well, uh, people are much more willing to blow my Serb check. Oh, we have fun. We have fun. We have fun. Uh, one more crowd work. Is James a patient? Yes, he was the patient, in fact, in that earlier joke. Folks, I want to I want to leave you on this the story, right? The story I was at a I was at um uh, I wouldn't call it an orgy, right? Uh, but this was a friends themed orgy. Okay, so there's three guys, three girls, all right. And we're all the different characters, and there's one guy in the corner named Gunther, okay. And, uh, and, and get this, so we're, we're, we're in this orgy, right? And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm getting busy, but then suddenly uh, here comes, here comes uh, the, uh, the, the Joey lookalike. He's looking pretty cute. And the Monica lookalike, she's looking pretty cute. So I start smoozing with them a bit. And Rachel comes up to me and she says, hey, what's the deal, bud? And I said, we were on a break. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you. You've been too kind, folks. You've been too kind outside of this wonderful Super Sex on St. Catherine Street. I've been Dr. Jack Nasty. Have a good night. Have a good night. Cut to the awesome. music. That was Dr. Jack Nasty, as nasty as can be live from the first ever Nasty Night at home with James. James for laughs. Dr. Jack Nasty, don't run off the stage too quickly because what, what we do that's a little differently than just for laughs is we like to get to know the performers and the artists. So uh, first thing I got to say is, damn, that was nasty. That was pretty nasty, James. You know, even for my standards, I looked at my, my, my set and it was mm -hmm. just, it was sopping wet with liquids that I, I did not know where they came from. Well, but you look, know what, James, I'm, I'm a professional and uh, the show must go on. Look, I get it. You had the crowd hooting and a hollering. There were zero laughs this past Monday because, of course, it was our worst of the fest. So there was very little audience to make any noise to be receptive to the jokes. We've got a packed crowd because what we know about Montreal is that Montreal likes to get dirty. I want to I want to talk about one of your jokes. You mentioned Serb. Yes. Yeah, people love Serb out here. A lot of people out here inside the strip club, they are blowing their Serb checks tonight. Now, now tell us, uh, Dr. Nassi, are you actually on Serb? James, I'm going to come clean. They say that behind every joke, there is a sad truth. Mm -hmm. James, I didn't get tenure. All right, well, I'm sorry to hear I didn't that. Get, I didn't get tenure at Harvard, James. They said my research... My research made no sense. What was some of your research centered around? Well, uh, James, I was trying to I was trying to prove how nasty I was. Yeah. To, to, uh, to defend my PhD to the board, and I just ended up submitting uh, multiple sex tapes. Oh, of yourself. They, 
And I'm, I'm, I'm mostly myself, yes. Mo so are you saying you get sex tapes of other people that don't involve you? Well, there was there was a couple sex tapes in there that were generously donated. Uh, thank you for donating yours, by the way, James. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it was really important to show the board how nasty. Yeah, mine, mine was mine was a solo. Mine, mine was a solo. Yes, it was really nice that I really liked that touch of uh, the uh, that that doll you had in the, in the, in the I'm not I'm not referring to a woman. Look, in the doll. we don't want to give any spoilers, massage, but an actual doll. Of course, yeah, we don't want to give out too many spoilers. Uh, Doctor Jack Nasty, do you have any? Words of wisdom for up and coming potential nasty comics that might be watching tonight that aspire to reach the levels that you have. Well, James, I I don't fashion myself a professional comedian. I am a doctor. I'm a man of science first. Okay, James, and uh, and uh, I'm to be frank right now. This is my backup plan. And as I'm leaving the the wonderful field of research and not mm -hmm. getting my doctorate. I'm trying to be a stand-up comedian. So actually, if anyone has any advice for me, oh, I'd love to hear it. Because let me tell you, I'm pulling a little bit of a king of comedy here. I'm in my mother's basement. Um, and I would really love some tips or some opening slots. Uh, Sugar Sammy, if you're out there. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Nasty, you've got a lot of great comedians coming up after you in just a moment. So I say I hope I hope none of them stole my jokes. James. I think that that would be very, very unusual and coincidental if that did happen. I suggest you take a seat, have a drink and maybe learn from some of the other nasty pros that we've got coming up on tap. How's that sound? All right, I'll be here with my extra large gin and soda and a little bit of uh, nasty juice, if you know All what right, I mean. Yeah, we'll enjoy that nasty juice, whatever that is. Uh, folks, that's Dr. Jack Nasty. Jack Nasty, thanks for the laughs. Thanks, James. It sounds like he was having a heart attack at the end there as he was saying goodnight. Uh, folks, we are going to keep this show rolling. Our next performer, one of the all-time greats in at-home history. You know her for a variety of things. Most of them involve or include nastiness. This person at one point brought nude photos of naked penises onto the show in which we had to blur. So who knows what's coming up tonight? She's funny and she's also racy. Let's welcome to the stage Raquel Belmonte. Oh, I have to wait five seconds. Has that been five seconds? There it is. Hi. Whoa, it's me. Um, give it up for James McGee, host of the show, host of this night. Give it up. Yes. Oh, what a man. What a uh, the man of the hour, some would say. Listen, my name is Raquel Balmonte. Um, and believe it or not, I am the only woman on the show, which is very, uh, yeah, ha, 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 this guy likes it. Uh, friend here, hey, do you like women? I'm doing crowd work. Yeah, he hates women. Anyways, guys, I came with something special today. Uh, I, as I talk uh, a lot about, I'm, I'm 29 years old. I'm turning 30. What a beautiful, what, yeah, give it up for me. I'm turning 30. <laughs> or laugh, that's, that's, that works. Yeah, I deserve that. I deserve that. Listen, I'm bringing you something very special today. I am bringing you something that 21 year old Raquel wrote. That's right, 21 year old Raquel wrote out an entire, Five minutes set, so and I am nasty. gonna read it. Can somebody please get this man out? <laughs> what was that? Disgusting. Uh, would he do it for the other male comics? Can I get a amen or yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. All right, everyone, easy, easy, easy. Settle, settle, settle. He's he's new. It's fine. It's fine. Everyone's fine and happy and. Fine. Okay. Lo and behold, here is 21 year old Raquel's uh, take on stand up comedy. I've always wanted to know what it would be like to have a penis. I don't want like a shitty one though. I want like a normal, sturdy dick, but not like a huge, nice one because I feel like those are few and far between. <laughs> Ah, right, they get it, this guy gets it. Anyways, I just want an above average 
white person penis. You know the type. If you have seen it, you know the type. Um, so, okay. Just about, yeah, white man, sorry. There's yes, some small yes, print yes, above yes. with an arrow that I'm trying to read. Uh, -bum. No, that is inappropriate and I'm not going to say that. And I only want this penis that I'm talking about. I only want this penis for one day. Maybe the weekend, depending on how much I can get done with it. Like a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, maybe not the Sunday. Oh, there are a few man. reasons why. Um, I'm so sorry to do this so early on in my set, but is there uh, security here? Is there somebody that can deal, deal with that? It's already so hard for me, a white woman, to do comedy. And here I am getting heckled by a white man wearing a, what is, what, what, a Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> oh, you guys, I, I don't, okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough, I said. Anyway, there are a few reasons why I want a penis. And the first reason is arguably the most obvious. Number one, bathroom time, cut it in half. First of all, I don't have to search for a bathroom. I could literally just pull my pants down and piss anywhere. Camping in no outhouse, piss on a tree. At the mall, no problem, piss on the gap. Peeing standing up is way more hygienic too because your ass doesn't touch a dirty uh, toilet seat. Um, Men don't even have to wipe themselves. Ever thought about that? They also don't wash their hands. You know how much time they save? Well, lucky for you, I did an experiment and I timed myself. I tinkled earlier. Yeah, that's right, women pee. Uh. <laughs> and you, then this guy gets it, this guy gets it. He's like, yeah, women piss, uh. yeah, he knows. But listen, is that a ghost or the police? I can't, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is that the, is that? <laughs> I'm gonna continue with my set because I am a strong, powerful woman. Anyway, I found, okay, uh, yeah, I piss and I found a toilet. I took all my clothes off, wiped myself, and I washed my hands, and it took me 42 seconds. Pa, you can definitely tell 21 year old Raquel wrote this because since I have developed a wild bladder condition, I am on the toilet for 20 minutes sometimes. Neither here nor there. James, we can talk about that after. Anyways, I think 42 seconds is a long time, and that's fucking bullshit. That's right. I'm a busy girl. I'm a busy girl. So I did a test. I did a test and removed and removed the finding of a washroom, taking off my bottoms pants and then wiping myself and washing my hands. And I was actually at negative 42 seconds, if you could believe that. Right, right, right. Oh, now you don't like it. Is that, what, what is that? Is it Star Wars music? I'm not a fucking nerd. I wouldn't know what that was. I'm a hot 21 year old. I was much hotter when I was 21, by the way. Jesus Christ. Give it up for your host, James McGee. <laughs> oh! And give it up for your first headliner, Dr. Jack Nasty. That was okay, right? That was fine. It was adequate. We had a nice time. Aww. Oh, okay, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Anyways, reason number two, uh, why I want a penis. I don't know about you guys, but I do a lot of dumb shit. You give me a bottle of wine and, and put me in a room with a blonde athlete. <laughs> so dumb. You give me a bottle of wine and put me in a room with a blonde athlete. Woo, I don't know what's gonna happen consensually. If we, if, if a girl cheats, we're fucking sluts. And you, t and then you text us awful misspelled things. However, if I had a penis and I cheated on someone, I can put the blame on my buddy, which is my dick, who might probably name, by the way, due to my maternal instincts. What? If I had a penis, I'd, if I had a penis, I'd have something to blame all of my horrible decisions on. Um, where, where are my men at? Give it, give it, give it a holler, man who have penises. 
Yeah, this guy gets it. This guy gets it. Uh, anyway, you guys have it so easy. All you have to do is say, sorry, babe, I was thinking with the wrong head. And we'll end up crying and apologizing and then go down on you because we feel bad. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I need a second. I would also love, I would also, reason number three, well, I want a dick. I would also love to feel the overwhelming desire that people with dicks get to send a chick, a chick, a picture of my dick or to show my peen on chat roulette while this is dated. People do that shit still, right? Why not? It's hilarious. Receiving dick pics is like receiving pictures of your third cousin's ugly children during the Christmas season. Well, maybe it's not as bad, but it's pretty close. Um, like you get the picture and you're annoyed at first, and then you open the thing and you can't stop laughing. You're like, what the fuck made it seem okay for them to send me this? It's gross. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> and um, it's gross. Bam! That was, I spent the most time on that joke. I'm so happy that's what you clapped for. Anyway, no penis picture. No, no dick ever looks picture ready. Ever. I bet there's some asshole out there who has equipment, lighting, uh, and someone to actually like take a picture of his penis. That'd be cool. Anyways, the reason number four why I love a dick, to dick slap. How do you even do that? Does it hurt? <laughs> What's the deal with dick slapping? Is that a dog? What was that? <laughs> Somebody bring their dog to James for laughs? Yeah. Oh my God, uh, anyone hate themselves right now or is that just me? Is that just me? Oh my God, <laughs> shout out to the dog in the audience. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the final reason uh, that I want a penis is because I would love it for, um, I, would, I would like to know what it's like to come on something or someone and not like a like girl like coming like like a cum situation i want i want like i want i want to catch air with my cum oh my god how do you even spell cum nice guys and classy broads <laughs> nice, nice guys and classy broads spell it c o m e yeah that's right this guy gets it are you a classy broad no you're just a nice Aww. boy ah Anyway, um, oh boy, douchebags or girls like me spell it C U M. <laughs> you know, there seems to be so much, uh, there seems to be so much going on when a man uh, blows his load on, oh my God, on a, <laughs> on a towel, on his stomach. I hate this more than you guys all hate this. Just so you know, I think I was more of a misogynist than the people who put together this lineup. Um, what the fuck did you just say? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm the problem. Sure. Like anybody, like nobody's told me that before. I'm trying. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> I just. Anyway, ouch. Anyways, um, uh, mm, I, you know, I wouldn't be like regular men though. I would be a considerate jizzer. Oh, I hate this. I, anyways, I'm not, I can be a considerate jizzer. I'm not gonna ruin my girlfriend's $300 blouse uh, because she wanted to, you know what? The rest of this is quite nonsensical, but I Aww. think I know what I was talking about. No, 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 don't awe me. Don't awe me. I'm fine. Do I not look like somebody who's fine? Is it because I'm a woman? I'm not fine. I'm fine. Oh, I swear to fucking God, I am going to fuck you up by the end of this show. <laughs> Anyways, that's my time. Raquel Belmonte, everyone. Ow. Wow, Raquel, uh... I got to tell you, that was really nasty.
It sucked. I didn't read this beforehand. I maybe read the first page. The rest sucked. Raquel, coming in from the chat right now, standing ovation. Stop it. It's in the chat right now. Uh, hey, is, is it for me or is it for the dog? I feel like in this world, well, yeah, it goes I wanted, I wanted men, white men that. in comedy, dogs, and then white women. Well, I wanted to talk about that, Raquel. Uh, yeah. I knew that things were going to get rowdy tonight, but I didn't think it was going to turn into a dog pound. What did it feel like performing to not only a packed virtual audience, but also a couple dogs? <laughs> It didn't feel terrible. It was nice to just mm. do comedy again. You know what I mean? We've been yeah. cooped up for so long. Uh, it just felt good. It felt good to perform for someone that wasn't uh, myself. Yeah, well, I have to say this, Raquel. Uh, you came in with some new, but also old material. And I think that it's really bold of you to have had the courage to try out some new stuff in a headlining spot on this festival. Did you just call me a headliner? Uh, everyone on this shit. everyone on this show is a headliner tonight. That's oh, the, well, that sucks. That doesn't just mean anything laughs, to me then. At Just for Laughs, there's only one headliner per show. At James for Laughs, everyone has equal footing. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, Raquel, uh, yeah. well, let's, let's let's walk through this. When was the last yeah, time? Ask me anything. Did, when was the last time you did stand up? James, I have done stand up one time and I don't even count it as stand up. Mm. I literally did it as homework yeah. for comedy school. I did go to comedy school. I did a semester at the second city in Chicago where this was mandatory. You want to know something even more fucked up? I performed that whole thing and I'm reading a joke that wasn't even part of that particular set mm -hmm. right now. I think I hate myself. I well, think well, a lot is starting to make sense. I'm reading it and it's about giving head. Look, uh, and how I learned how. Well, I'm look, here's the star, thing. And I'm just like, I thought that was okay. I did a whole set. And you want to know what's even worse is I crushed it. I crushed it in what year was that? I don't know. I was 20. I just, I was a ripe 21. I was a ripe 21 years well, old. You can't fault 21 year old Raquel for what 21 year old Raquel thought was funny. Totally. And also like, why was I talking about that stuff? 29 year old Raquel wants to have a sit down with 21 year old Raquel and be like, Hey, it's really not that bad. That wasn't that. Well, I'll, I'll or tell like, you this yeah. much. I, I never knew 21 year old Raquel, but, but I would like to think that I have come to know 29 year old Raquel a little bit. And there is one thing that hasn't changed is that it seems like there continues to be a, a fascination with penises based on the images that you've brought to this show. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I have always, and I don't know if it's because of my Catholic upbringing or because I wasn't allowed to like, and I'm being serious, like I wasn't allowed to like talk about this kind of stuff, but I always did. And I was always fascinated about sex. Yeah. And then I started to like, yeah, because when you're in a Catholic school, especially mine, you're not allowed to talk about it, but that's all I wanted to talk about. James, I was a horny little kid. I was, and guess what? I'm still a horny little lady. Look, you know what? It's good to be young at heart, and it feels like you continue to embrace little Raquel as you grow up to be older Raquel. You know, I'm doing a lot of, and this is real also, I'm doing a lot of inner work, uh, yeah. sorry, inner child work with my therapist, mm. and I feel like I should tell her this. I feel like I should tell her this. I think, you should, read, part. I think you should read your therapist that whole notebook of jokes. Oh, I don't know. There's some weird shit that I keep. I'm going to close the notebook because I keep looking and I'm like, Look, how yeah, about this? no, I was fascinated about about penises and yeah. people who had those penises. But you know what? I was mostly I was mostly fascinated by James. Tell me. And I didn't even get into it that much. Come. That was sure. like my thing. I was like, why is this something? Yeah. How do I make this something? Yeah. How do I make it my own? And it, I think I, I think it's I'm not too late. Thank you. No, I was going to say, I think I figured it out, but oh, yeah, okay. okay. Well, it's not too late. Not no. only is it not too late, <laughs> but you've got it figured out. Look, Raquel, again, I think uh, you really put yourself out there. One of your, probably your first headlining set since the before COVID times. Yeah. I echo the sentiment of uh, not only the dogs in the audience, but right now the virtual audience, I give you a standing ovation. Thank you. Is that it? You should ask me more questions. I feel like we should kind of detract or, or like pull away from what I just. Well, I'll tell did. you what. I'll tell you what. We got to get to our last headliner of the night, but I'll make a deal with you. How about next week we unpack these jokes? Oh, I don't know. We come up, Raquel. Look, it's important to confront these things. We have a whole segment called "Behind Raquel Belmonte." 
That sounded bad as I said that out loud. I so loved it. Know. That's okay. going to be, if I ever accidentally make a porn, that's what it's Yeah. Called. Well, look, all the accidental ones are the most enjoyable ones. Raquel, how about this? Wait, what does that mean? The accidental yes, pornography? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what was that? Is that a ghost? Oh, it may have been our unruly crowd. They just want more nasty stuff. But guess what? You got to tune in next week, Raquel. I think like, you know, like when you, you watch like an A&E biography, you get to know the inner workings of what goes on behind the artist. That's what we're going to sure. do next week. We're going to unpack everything and get to know the person behind the joke teller. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to at least explain myself. It's, it's no worries. It's no I worries mean, and the pleasure's all mine. I also want you to know both of my brothers heard mm -hmm. me do that whole thing. Oh. Yeah, I'm not proud of it. They're right there. They're making dinner like good sons while their sister, the oldest one, just talked about dicks. Did you get I any applause? None. Look at that, but you're still getting applause from the audience. Raquel, they love you. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, they love All you. All right, get rid of me. Good night, goodbye. Raquel, thanks so much for being here, folks. That was Raquel Belmonte. What a set, straight from the notebook, and we're gonna keep things going. He was here on Monday. And he's back by popular demand. Here he comes, the one and the only, Dirty Dave Kaufman. Keep it going for Dirty Dave. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, how's it going? Uh, good to be here. Good to be here. Good to be back on the uh, James for Laughs stage. Uh, let's keep going for uh, keep going for the host. Keep going the host, uh, James McGee. Uh, let's keep it going for uh, my, uh, my first opener. Uh, uh, hey. Doctor, uh, Doctor Nasty, Doctor Jack Nasty. Uh, we'll keep going for him. Keep going for him. Uh, keep going for uh, my second opener, uh, Raquel Belmonte. Keep going for him. What a what a fun night we're having. Uh, but enough about me. Uh, let's uh, let's hit the jokes, shall we? All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, all right. Uh, just uh, this is a little PG thirteen warning. These are going to get a little bit, uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit, a uh, little bit nasty. All right. Uh, a woman walks out of the shower and winks at her boyfriend and says, uh, Honey, I shaved myself down there. Do you know what that means? The boyfriend says, uh, Yeah, it means the drain's clogged. Aww. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Uh, why do uh, mermaids uh, wear seashells? Uh, maybe it's because they grew out of their bee shells? Okay, okay. Uh, what does one saggy boob say to the other saggy boob? Uh, if we don't get some support, people will think we're nuts. People are gonna, they're going to think they're nuts. Uh, well, what do you call a cheap circumcision? What do you call it a ripoff, folks? <laughs> call it a ripoff. Okay, okay, let's keep it going. Let's keep it moving. Uh, what's the difference between an oral thermometer and a rectal thermometer? An oral thermometer and a rectal thermometer. Uh, the taste. Aww. Yeah, I uh, I ate some shit, folks. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, what's the pro? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it was it was nasty. It stunk. All right. Uh, what's the process of applying for a job at Hooters? Uh, they just give you a bra and they say, here. Fill this out. <laughs> you know, their breasts. You know, you know how it is, folks. You know how it is. Uh, what's the difference oh, between a pickpocket and a peeping Tom? Uh, one snatches your watch, the other watches your snatch. Okay, okay, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Uh, what's the difference between a tire and 365 used condoms? Uh, one's a good year, and the other's a great year. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Here we go, here we go. Uh, a family's uh, driving behind, behind a garbage truck when a dildo, yeah, that's right, a dildo, flies out and uh, thumps against the windshield. Uh, the mother turns around and says, uh, don't worry, dear, to her son. That was just an insect, you know, she's trying to catch a dildo. And the son goes, the son goes, uh, wow, I'm surprised the insect could get off the ground with a uh, cock like that. Because uh, you did see it was a cut. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, why did the, uh, why did the sperm... Okay, I'll, I'll hold your applause. 
Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, why did the sperm cross the road, folks? Why did the sperm cross the road? Uh, it's because I put on the wrong sock this morning. I jerk off in my socks. Uh, you know when the wife goes, uh, she'll go, uh, give it to me, give it to me. And uh, I'm so wet, I'm so wet. Uh, give it to me now. Uh, she can scream all she wants, you know, but I'm, I'm, but I'm keeping that umbrella. Aww. Yeah, keeping it. Uh, hey, I'll admit it. I have a tremendous sex drive. Uh, yeah, my wife lives 40 miles away. It's a long drive to get to her. Uh, it's a long, oh, there's that damn dog. <laughs> that damn dog's here. Uh, hey, uh, how do you make a pool table laugh? You tickle its balls. Tickle its balls, folks. Uh, what's the difference between kinky and kinky and perverted? Uh, kinky is when you tickle your girl. Kick, uh, sorry, tiki, <laughs> kinky is when you tickle your girlfriend with a feather. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but perverted is when you use the whole bird. Not just a feather. You're incorporating the bird into your sex life. Well, normally you would just, uh, you just use a feather. Yeah, if you were born in September, it's uh, it's pretty uh, safe to assume that your your parents started the new year with a bang. Okay, okay, okay. A naked man uh, broke into a church. The police chased him around, and uh, they finally caught him by the organ. All right, you know, there's set dips uh, in the middle. <laughs> set dips in the middle, but I'm going to bring it back. I'll bring it back. Uh, what do a penis and a Rubik's Cube have in common? Uh, the more you play with it, the harder it gets. Folks, I can never figure those things out. Those cubes, you know? Hey, uh, what do you do when, uh, when your cat dies? Uh, you, know, you play with the neighbor's pussy instead? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, what's long green and smells like bacon? Uh, Kermit the Frog's fingers. Yeah. It takes a second to figure out that uh, Kermit's finger in this pig. <laughs> and that's why his fingers smell that way. Because he's a filthy pig. Uh, what do you do when you get, when you uh, jingle Santa's balls? You get a white Christmas, folks. Uh, okay, okay. Let's uh, let's try one. Let's try a. Uh, what did the leper say to the sex worker? Worker, uh, keep the tip. <laughs> and I'm gonna drop you off at home with this one, folks. But uh, <laughs> but here it goes. Uh, a man and a woman Aww. start to have sex in the middle of a dark forest. After about 15 minutes, the man finally gets up and says, damn, I wish I had a flashlight. The woman says, me too. You've been eating the grass this past 15 minutes. That's my time, folks. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, just uh, a quick, uh, quick thing. Uh, well, what's that? Uh, there's a phone call, actually. Well, I didn't steal any jokes this time, so you can tell Sean that uh, things are okay. Oh, oh, don't, uh, don't worry. Uh, this uh, isn't Sean. Okay, well, you know, I can always handle a heckler. Uh, bring it on. Yeah, this is no worries. Uh, so I'm gonna, um, unfortunately, on my end of things, the technical stuff, I need to, uh, I need to patch them in. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take myself off screen for this one. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. All right. Uh, okay. So one second. Okay, uh, line one, you're on the air with Dave. Hello? Hi, David. Hello? Yeah, hi. Uh, what's, what's going on? Who is this? Oh, it's me, Sylvia. Oh, hi, Sylvia. How are you? David, I have to tell you something. I was watching the show, and I absolutely loved your jokes. Oh, well, thank you very much, Sylvia. That means, uh, that means a lot to me. I appreciate you coming out and checking the show. But you know the uh, old if you song. want like a, oh sir oh no after you please gentlemen first uh, well I'm gonna have to uh, I gotta go back to the green room you know uh, I'm out of time so uh, I got oh. the light oh this this won't take much of your time okay 
old saying about how even a joke, there's some truth to it? Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, I've heard that saying maybe once or twice. Now, David, I have a question. Sure. Were those jokes about me? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, though? They were. Uh, well, I heard they were just jokes, you know, uh, sort of. Uh, I write. I walk around with a little notepad and I jot down things that I find amusing. Well, I heard one that really spoke to me. Oh yeah, which one's that? I thought that. Ooh, this has to be about Sylvia. Which which joke? Well, the joke about the neighbor. Which one was that? Remind me. Uh... <laughs> Specifically <laughs> about a neighbor's pussy. <laughs> oh right, the uh, the cat dying. Yeah, that was a little play on words because uh, people will call cats. They'll call them pussy cats, you know. But it also means uh, the genitals of a lady. Oh, I know, David. Uh, the reason that I'm calling like the labia. Oh, I cervix. Oh, keep painting a picture for me, bad boy. <laughs> well, that's all the parts that I know. Well, David, you know we live on the same street, right? Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard about that, but uh, I don't know quite where you live. But yeah, I probably live on. I mean, I'm not going to say it starts with an M, but uh, yeah, I starts live with on. starts with an M, <clears throat> ends with Elrose. <laughs> yeah, sure. You can. Yeah, I live on Melrose. That's right. Well, I don't know. I was listening to your set, and I couldn't help but think that was a joke about me. I know you're a married man, but <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Sylvia. Uh, but it's just uh, it's sort of a uh, David. It's, yeah, you're teasing me. I'm not trying to tease you, Sylvia. I'm just you <laughs> are teasing me, and you are tempting me, Sylvia. David, Sylvia, I am a married man. Okay, you can't just try to seduce me every time we talk you know i've got a wife, i've got a child now i'm seducing you did you hear that joke it was just a joke it was just a joke about a pussy cat sylvia david yes i'm teased and i like it <laughs> okay well uh maybe uh maybe you can uh, settle that on your end yourself because uh unfortunately i can't uh i can't uh I can't be involved with another woman. I, 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 it, would, it, would, it would just rip my wife's oh, heart. Come I, on. That's fine. I'm not married to her. <laughs> well, I, I love her, you know. She's, uh, she's oh, the one for me. I'm not asking you to stop being in love with her. Well, what are you asking me? Well, I think it's pretty clear what I'm asking. I want you to have an affair with me. I can't do that. On uh, We're... we're, we're sh we're live on the James for Laugh stage. I can't just agree to an affair in front of all those people. What if, well, it's uh, my under it's my understanding that tonight is nasty night, and there's nothing nastier than an affair. Well, uh, I suppose that's true. Nasty, nasty. <laughs> I suppose. Who is uh, that? Who's that? What do you know? Well, that's uh, the ghost of the forum. <laughs> So you can, David, you can bring him too. <laughs> I'm not going to have an affair with you and a ghost. Okay, so how about just you and me then? No, I can't do it, Sylvia. Look, I'm, I, we haven't met in person, but I'm sure you're a very attractive lady. God you knows that your voice me. is hot as hell. <laughs> but I can't do it, okay? I am in a committed relationship. I have a daughter that I need to raise. <laughs> and I don't want my daughter to be raised by divorced parents because well, although those that's possible those I, kids can come out okay I, I it's don't fine david i understand but i need for you to know something sure i'm never ever going to give up on you well uh, <laughs> thanks ghost thanks for punctuating that well i appreciate that uh uh yeah, Dave Sylvia's uh she hung up. Did she hang up or did she disapparate like the ghost did? No, she hung up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh I was getting I'm bring myself back on screen. Uh Dave, that was an unbelievable set of filthy material. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I've been working on these jokes all year. Well, look, it really sounds like it spoke to the audience. Yeah. Dave, you know, I gotta tell uh, you everyone... something. 
I was just going to say everybody, uh, you know, everybody's got their nasty side, right? People, uh, people present themselves quite eloquent in society sometimes, well, yeah. but when you dig below the surface, you know, that nastiness comes out. Well, look, everyone knows that audiences love on the line, adult sexual based humor, and it speaks to them. And it sounds like you've got one massive fan who it felt like, uh, at least to them, you were speaking to them directly. We're talking about Sylvia. Sure. Yeah. No, let's be honest. Dave, between you and me, just a couple of guys shooting the breeze. Sure, just the boys, you know, the boys chatting. You mentioned that uh, Sylvia's voice was hot as hell. <laughs> yeah, she's got a sexy voice. She is a sedu- Sylvia is a seductress. She's a temptress, you know, and, and sometimes, uh, like I've never called a uh, one of those uh, dollar a minute phone sex lines, but I imagine mm-hmm. that uh, the ladies on the other end of that line sound a little bit like that. Well, okay, so well, let's be honest. Is nothing about Sylvia attempting to you? Uh, well, there's the convenience of her living near me. Right, okay. So in the situation that you would happen to be single, you're telling us right now that it would be convenient for you because Sylvia lives near you. Sure, in that particular case. But I will, I will never be single uh, unless my wife passes away, which uh, hopefully she does not. Uh, I'm, I'm getting. I'm going on the record saying that I hope my wife here. doesn't die. Uh, we're getting, we got a text on the text board right now. This is unaffiliated to the chat because people can send in texts. Uh, this coming in from Sylvia, she says, I guess in response to you saying that you're never going to be single, she writes, never say never. And then, uh, it's just the mouth emoji. (laughs) All right. Well, Dave, it sounds like the audience wants this romance to happen. Uh, who knows? Who knows? You you and Sylvia might get together. You might have some material for the 2022 edition of James for Laughs because God knows everyone's going to be begging for a 2022 edition of this fest. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure this fest will be uh, stand the test of time and maybe uh, we'll be around in uh, 2032. All right. Well, let's hope not. Uh, Dave, <laughs> thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, who knows? We might even see you on the gala this coming Friday. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Yeah. You're going to wear your uh, your Friday best? Oh, yeah, I've got a, uh, a suit being steam cleaned right now. All right, well, uh, send me the bill because that becomes a show expense. Dave, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for the laughs. You got it. That's that my was... signature line. What's that now? You got it is my signature line. All right, so uh, Dave has really embraced the world of stand-up comedy. He's got a signature line, and it is the hilarious line of, quote, <laughs> You got it. <laughs> Folks, that is night two of James for Laughs and what a festival it has been so far. Give it up and keep it going for Dr. Jack Nasty, Raquel Belmonte, who just uh, spat all over her webcam. And also Dave Kaufman. Don't forget that our closing night gala this Friday. Don't miss it. Dimitri Kirez is going to be here as well as so many more surprises aplenty Stay posted on our Instagram account at Home with James Show. Once again, that's on Instagram. Until then, I want to thank you so much for being here. All of our acts, we are going to be played out by the custom made James for Laughs theme song, courtesy of Eliezer Kramer. Until then, I am James. You are you. We were here. Good night, goodbye, farewell, and of course, be well. Oh, <laughs>